Good afternoon, everybody. It's Miss Joseph here. So I am over at a place called Bass, and I wanted to do my reading here today. Um, reading The White Giraffe by Lauren St. John. I'm going to look like a crazy person talking to myself because there are people over there. And I'm not going to zoom on them because that would be rude. Uh, there's my dog. And we are just going to look like crazy people for a little bit and do some reading. So I'll let you guys enjoy the view while I read The White Giraffe, Chapter 5. Alright, here we go. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but there is some of the book. I might just have to let you guys enjoy the view while I read. Alright, here it is. In the yard, Tendai had the engine running. As soon as Martin climbed into the jeep, he put his foot on the accelerator and they bounded over the pothole drive and onto the main road. Heat wave wavered like a watery mirage above the pavement. Tendai seemed agitated. I'm sorry, Miss Martine. I shouldn't have taken you there. Perhaps you would be kind enough not to mention it to your grandmother. Martine bar barely heard him. Her forehead was still tingling from the pressure of Grace's hand, and her mind was rushing like an express train through her past. She was trying to remember something, anything, that would explain what had just happened. But what did Grace mean about my mom? She did she ever li live in Salmona? Please, begged and die. those things you must ask your grandmother. He drove on in silence for a few minutes before turning right right onto a sandy road lined with a high wire fence, arcing over the entrance and supported by two white pillars with a black wooden sign etched with the words Salbona Game Reserve. The jeep stopped and Tendai pointed out of the window. Can you see the buffalo? Martine dragged herself reluctantly back to the present. She squinted into the sun, but could not see anything except an endless expanse of trees, dusty shrubs, and grass sprawling under an electric blue sky. On the horizon was a range of mauve mountains. A black eagle circled lazily overhead. No, she sighed. I can't. Don't look through the bush, instructed Tendai. Look into the bush. Martine did, and gradually the shrubs resolved themselves into the muscular black hides of around 30 buffalo. She could make out the curved horns and intense faces between the trees. Then she spotted the bull elephant. He was standing under an umbrella tree, his curved tusks and gray bulk almost completely camouflaged. Like the buffalo, he seemed as ancient as the land itself, but even from 300 yards away, his deadly power was apparent. On to the next page. Martine stared at him in awe. She was beginning to feel overwhelmed by all she had seen and heard since leaving the airport. Wow, she said at last. He's huge and so, so still. I've only ever seen wild animals on television. What else do you have here? Twelve other elephants, Tendai recited proudly. Eight ostriches, 150 springboks, ten wildebeest, 18 kudus, 20 zebras, 6 lions, 4 leopards, 7 warthogs, a couple of troops of baboons, a few water bucks, and, uh, he stopped. That's all. And what? You were going to say something else. It's nothing, Tendai said. The local tribes believe that a white giraffe has come to Salbona. The Africans have a legend which says that the child who can ride a white giraffe will have the power over all the animals. It is only a myth. We have, we have had no giraffes, not even ordinary giraffes, at Salabona for nearly two years now. But people keep coming to me to report that they've seen the, this white one. The tribesmen say that it's an albino giraffe, as white as a snow leopard. If it's true, that would make it one of the rarest animals in the world. There is no proof. I have never seen it, and I am in the game reserve every day. Martine had an odd feeling of deja vu almost as if she'd had this conversation in another life. But do you believe it exists? She asked eagerly. Tendai shrugged. From time to time, I have seen tracks, but they always disappear. I follow them for a few hundred yards, and then they just vanish into, th into thin air. So maybe it is true. 
The Zulu laughed. It is not always the one you follow who makes the tracks, little one. In the old times, some tribes would tie their hooves of animals to their feet to lead... Oh, sorry, I think I messed that up. In old times, some tribes would tie the hooves of animals to their feet to lead other hunters away from their herds. And your grandmother says that in the mountains of Asia, Asia people have tried to fake the footprints of the abominable, abominable snowman. Maybe this is what is happening here, he grinned at Martine. If the white giraffe does exist, he said, it must be very shy. The gears clanked, and they moved off down the road. When they reached a high iron gate, Tendai jumped out to open it. On the other side was a driveway lined with huge red and orange flowers, an immaculate lawn, and a white-painted thatched house. Nerves bit into Martine's stomach. In a few minutes, she would meet her grandmother for the first time. Would Gwen Thomas be glad to see her? Would she be kind? Would she, even though she hadn't really wanted her, learn to like Martine? And what if she didn't? What then? All right. That is the end of that chapter. We'll move on to chapter six next time. My dog is currently trying to get into my backpack to get those treats. So I'm going to have to stop her in just a second. I hope you guys have a great day. And I will read chapter six soon. All right. Bye, guys.